Huh. Okay. So, the Axeman is okay. Roach goes away. I don't have a discarder. And I don't have the Witchers. So, Thursday Skirmisher, go away. I have a discarder. But I got only one thing to discard. Raise your hands. Who thinks the game would be better without the artifacts? Me. You played badly? Ah, uh, perhaps so. I think, I think the artifacts alone... Like, obviously when they released the Homecoming, and they had artifacts in it, and they were so... ridiculously poorly balanced... Uh, that... That it just like... It was, it was... The, the reception to Homecoming was like, seriously affected by that. I think artifacts alone, or maybe this card alone, made a lot of streamers just like, quit the game. And even at this point, if you can play it and your opponent doesn't remove it, it's a really good card. So... Because what Artifact basically says, it's an invul invulnerable value generator. So, and immune cards are always cool. Artifacts clap. I don't really mean to, like, complain about artifacts non-stop, but... But they are kind of artifacts. I kind of have to. Alright, X-Men time. The gods speak to him. I will not apologize for that. I'm a little... Also the fact that... Yeah, yeah, Like, in, in their form. In their current form. Like... That, that's the biggest problem. If they had more counters, for example, if, like, this artifact had, like, five armor or, like, six armor, you can destroy it, you can lock it, like, obviously, like, maybe that's too much counter, but, like, point is, like, maybe more interaction with it, because it's currently just, a, it basically, like, a, an immune unit that you can't damage, that doesn't give you any upfront value, but if they just, like, got rid of, like, uh, Artifact removal and just say like, hey, whatever. Six armor. There you go. Ah, uh, that kind of needs to die. Roly Serp and eat him. Uh, that was actually a, a one day that I was like played like so much Usurper and I streamed it too. It was like five, six hours of Usurper of like uh, me and the chat trying to figure out how do you have the best Usurper ever. And um, well, it, it was okay, but. Usurper is ultimately not that interesting because he's just like shuts down the fun of your opponent and you're just putting in a lot, a lot of generate crap to shut down your opponent even harder. For example, like if we used Usurper against like uh, uh, that Emu monster guy that we probably would have lost in that scenario. Uh, you can easily push it to 2,500 odds, but that... What? Death to the enemy! <laughs> if Usurper was a monster class, now that would be insane. Uh, yeah, because... Mm, I don't know. Kind of depends on the opposition because he doesn't get as many po as many points but I would definitely agree that uh, the monsters 
have probably the best cards. Best bronzes. Most best bronzes for sure. Wait. So I'm in the lead now. I can pass. This is tricky. That will force him to pass next turn. Oh, this is very tricky. <sighs> he's going down two cards, but like he's passing for sure. I'm not sure. He's putting in more cards of like that. So, uh, we can go with the Scalds. Great Marauder, Savage Bear. Oh yeah, we still didn't play the Witchers, which is quite relevant. Maybe we will not play them. Round 2. Because he's kind of forced to play a certain way. Uh, we can go Savage Bear, make the bear... ...stronger. Let's pass. We only have one card to this card, uh, which is a little troublesome. And uh, we have to go first, so Ancreat Marauder won't be terribly useful. Uh, don't know about the Witchers. But that definitely doesn't help me. Okay. So maybe we can establish Herald. This could give us some... Uh, we don't have the horn, but we might draw into it. Now let's do that. So this gives us more damage. To kill possibly something that generates value. Surp is still good. The surp is okay. <laughs> also, I have a problem with Vetter because Vetter <laughs> is just weird. There's a guy in the game that costs five provision for four points and removes the Vetter. Pays one point. To counter a 12 point card. But it's a very binary card. Would you have it in your deck? So I don't really think that's that's a good way to balance things. Because if I had it, he loses on the spot, but in this scenario, it's gonna be okay. And we probably need to play into it. He probably has a Nivalan. Of course, he's gonna play Drabuches if he has it.
So it would be better if we hit the Herald pause. Also, I kind of want to enable my pirate captains. But I don't want to drop Morgvarg randomly into the fire. Uh, that would be a pretty bad idea. So maybe we do something like that. As long as I enable uh, the pirate captains, this is a good spot. But I'm not el not really sure how we're gonna do that. The best would be is that we scald, Don't you pester me. and Morgvark doesn't end up in the fire. But that's like a 50-50 that just, uh, it's a 5-point swing in the game. Definitely not gonna be relevant. We had to keep the damage, uh, because of that. Although, yeah, nah, that's not good now. We have the Savage Bear. He just plays a copy and boosts it by four. Well, I can kill that. Hang another guy. Yeah, that's good. Unfortunately. But I can only kill one. Oh fuck, we can't even kill one. Because he doesn't have anything wounded. So, I need to wound this. Oh crap, we're in big trouble. Yeah, wound that. Then we got a burner. That's useful. Okay. Not much choice. Okay, at least that always spawns to the melee row. Oh, that's melee row as well. I was dumb. Uh, obviously, I'm not too familiar with Skelligam. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, guys, what should I eat? Pizza or pizza? You can't go wrong with either. So What's this on one? Uh, let's finish that off. It's getting troublesome. I know, randomly hit the the bear so we can target something. Fuck. That's a good strategy. We're just so fucked. <laughs> okay, I don't see us winning this. Smart place. Uh, fine. Got a death wish. Yeah, it's a good strategy. I ha I have to admit it. It worked out pretty well. He can target something right away. I didn't have a, a way to... Okay. Let's just try to blow up. But this doesn't have a reach. Try to blow up the trebuchet. And setting the meteor on fire. That, that just already worked out. So That was GG. Well done. Favorite cut of lamp? The shank. 
That Ragnarok was Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Ragnarok! Okay. That's the proper uh, way to pronounce it. That Ragnarok was really good. I basically won him 20 points, plus kind of set up the... the... the barbecue in the back. Actually, I have it in my graveyard. Kind of forget uh, Sabrina's name from time to time. Well, I can only hit once. So might as well save it for a little bit later. Maybe he's gonna play like... No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're just completely out of this. You're a huge fan of R&R? It's insanely good. Well, depends on the matchup. And the length of the round, but yeah, I, I could agree that in, in some cases it's just really good. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally dead. That's why I like to push short round strategies, because in a way, well, I wouldn't say like Ragnarok is a, like a really good card, but uh, the, the game revolves so much around long round strategies that like, you're almost guaranteed to use Ragnarok in an uh, advantageous situation. Of course, most decks don't really have it, and it really worked that for him this time. If I was playing something more passive, maybe like with artifacts, just to uh, stay disgustingly meta, then uh, it would have uh, been uh, less good. Anyway, GG for sure. Uh, that was pretty impressive. Okay. Approach. And Esco goes away. I didn't have much choice. Croc! What do you guys think about the the state of removals? Are you guys happy with that? These hard counters, like uh, the remove. How do you counter artifacts? You either have the removal or you don't. Nothing in between. Whether you either have the removal or you don't. Not necessarily nothing in between, but like it's kind of up to movers. Movers might give you a little bit of room, but realistically, it's not too much. I can hit that a little bit. Wait, we don't have an X-Men, right? Sometimes it's hard to see, but we don't have one. Um... And we gotta play the Witchers. Roach! Hard counters are bullshit. After either you win or lose, depending on your deck choice and what you draw. No skill involved. But the problem is, like, for example, like you play Ragnarok, you include it for 12 points, and you may get like 20 points from it. So big difference. But if your opponent has the counter to it, then he played something for four uh, that costs him five, but actually gives him. Four points and completely negates your card. It's huge. It's like game over. Why play anymore? Like that that could literally what the card could say. They can have a four point card that says if you play it on a row with Vetter, you win the game. That that's what it can say. And and that's exactly what it says, usually. But nobody has it, obviously. Across the wide somber sea, I will sail. Ex except if it's the not the last round. It might not matter, but but in the last round, they could just release the uh, just replace the text, and you're just like, hey, you lose the game, easy peasy. 
I play R&R &R because nobody plays counters, not because I'm good at... Well, I'm good at playing, just made a good choice in deck selection. But you shouldn't need to apologize for that. So I have a feeling that he doesn't have too many big units. Do I need to shut that down? So I have a Swordmaster generating like one value a turn. I'm not sure if I'm ready to gear up professional it. Maybe we're just gonna wait a little bit with that. What I can do is... Maybe do a... Uh, that. And that. Enable the, the captains. I just don't want to use up my good cards uh, needlessly. It's a little odd that he decided to hit the four. Oh my god, this guy has nothing. Each two. Fine. We're killing it with pirate captains. He passed. I pass as well. You won the round! Time to push! To gain a card advantage. Okay. Uh, that sucker goes away. Wolfie pack? What the fuck? No. Oh, that's good. That's really good. But what else? Um, yeah, we're gonna have some good cards here. How about... Oh, this is a good combo. I'm maybe we're just gonna draw some card. Yeah. So, we gotta keep it like this. I can drop Burner Brand. Drop those two, see what we get. Or maybe... We can start with Demon Longship, then Burner Brand, then maybe Demon Pirate Captain. We'll see. But this could enable that. And these are not particularly strong cards. So, we're gonna start with the ship. We are not gonna hit the ship with the leader. Uh, not apologizing. Being able to read the meta is uh, skill in itself. I don't think that it should be that important. A skill should be outplaying the other or getting lucky. I have a similar problem with luck mechanic. Binary, draw it, you win. Don't you lose. Bullshit. Um, I don't have that big of a problem with lock. Mainly because the lock units tend to give up quite a lot of stat. You know, some some cards are just really not worth locking, like the tribe units. You can't really lock them to gain, gain a lot of value. Well, it, it could be worth it, but like, locking them just feels bad. You want to kill them. Okay, let's burn up. You stand before the Queen of Skellige. Oh, look at that! Who's losing a card? It's gotta be you! <laughs> We're not! <laughs> Holy crap. I totally misread that. Apparently it's not him. Well, I can technically pass. We're okay, but do I wanna... Well, I didn't see that coming. This is not really a, a Francesca staple card.
I suppose pushing for a card advantage is still pretty sensible. We'll see. Yes, one. Oh, that's huge. The guns are with us. Yeah, punish her. There you go. Maybe I can trade this wolf back for something good. What? Sure. Can I just try to trade some trash cards? Maybe not. Unsure. What's this on one? So we're gonna need the horn plus uh Herald. Weapons laugh to scorn. Yeah, this is just bad. I won't be able to force him. The 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 time he scorched everything, that hurt a lot. Only my feelings. Yeah, I don't really want to push with these cards. Even pushing was extremely questionable. Couldn't really trade my cards. Good. Okay. Uh, X-Men is not gonna be terribly useful. Scald. What a selection! Um, give me that. Um, give me the schoolboy. Not school, but actually school. <laughs> what the hell? Get spawned on the other row. Oh, let's do that. <laughs> I your Stop it. I can kill that. But nah, let's not do that. I play to compete with myself and I like math, like practicing it anyway, in an interesting way. Poker too, for the same reason. Holy crap. Uh, I'm not sure if you, you guys are aware, I used to play poker. I didn't, well, it was a pretty uh, unpopular choice, I have to say, uh, I made. People weren't really into that. Uh, this is the, it definitely has that feeling to it like, oh my god, he's like a degenerate gambler. Um, I don't know, uh, gambling, well, it's kind of gambling a dick, but it was like 1% far from that. It had nothing to do with it. The only reason I, I actually started playing poker, although I, I wouldn't really recommend it uh, right now, unless you're really into that, but I wasn't. The only reason I, I, I got into it, because some reason I was influenced into it, but the reason why I, I, I kind of kept doing it a little bit is because I, I saw the math and I was kind of intrigued by the the skills you needed to pick up. Uh, to get good, but ultimately poker and I'm not saying that you, you can get, like, amazing and you just get bored. But oh, poker is pretty repetitive. So, and there's definitely, like, more 
you can get better and better, but it's kind of a repetitive game. It's basically like figuring out the best strategy and executing it like a machine. And uh, that's basically how you do it properly. And it's not, not really about like, oh yeah, this guy might must be like metagaming me. I'm just gonna... Um, just like... Die. Just change my ideal strategy. Get him. But no, that's dumb. It's basically just having your strategy and just like uh, executing it properly. You love poker, it's your favorite card game. Game of statistics and psychology. But I think it could be... I think people might be... Uh, overestimating the psychology part of it. It's really hard to know properly, because if you're playing it live, maybe that psychology and reading people and whatnot, that plays more of a role. But if you're playing it... Uh... <laughs> Crap. I think we can just burn that. Uh, but if you're playing it online, and you, you might be overreading the, the psychology part of it, or at least I was, it, it can be a huge leak, that's how it's called. Uh, deviating from your optimal strategy uh, that you try to overplay because you think the other guy is playing you, but most regulars uh, don't really overplay, but they just like play their own strategy. You play your own strategy and like, and hope that Rake uh, doesn't kill you. <laughs> uh, Social psychology, I eh? Poker requires uh, the people you want to play with. That's what's fun. Well, I really care about psychology. I, I read about psychology a lot. It kind of started out as a way of me realizing how big of a fucked up person I am. Uh, that's kind of like the early 20s. Uh, then that's kind of where it started. I was struggling and I was like, fuck. I, whatever guidance I, I got, it's just not enough, and I need more. And uh, actually, I was, I was I really got into it. And uh, the initial sources I got wasn't that great, but like, I, 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 this is just something I kept up. And when I, I wasn't really... Uh, keeping up with it. I think my... Whoa, that's kind of annoying. My, uh, mental health uh, suffered to an extent. I think it's really important. It's... You can say, like, I think it's pretty important to understand your your own decisions, your own motivations. It's just so damn important. And, and, and it's just one thing I feel like... Yeah, that's pretty annoying. That uh, you, you can you can just learn a lot. So if one thing that I I could really uh, well change about the schooling system is that you know people should be more uh, well prepared for life I suppose. But like psychology is just super important I think it's like a crucial part of mental health. Which is just as important as, as physical health. But yeah, GG, Kingra. Uh, replaying the, the... Well... Actually, it turned out that... Uh, the Blue Dream was like a 12. Well done, GG.